So, next speaker is Francisco. So, uh, Francisco um, Javier Alvarez um, Carvajal is going to talk to us um, about towards TE, a TEI model for the encoding of diplomatic charters. And uh, Francisco is at uh, EHES, is that how you pronounce it? I guess. Uh, well, in French, is. EHES, -E okay. so uh, the Code de Sotitude and Science Social. I'm Spanish, I work in France at the moment, um, but I'm also working in Dixit, which is this initial training network funded by the European Union, by the European Commission. Uh, I think that one colleague of mine will uh, speak more in depth about it later on today. So I'm gonna just jump directly into my presentation. I'm a medievalist, I'm an historian, and more particularly, I'm a diplomatist. Um, so I'm interested in um, having a look at medieval charters and study and research their internal structure, like the, their internal, um, what we call the diplomatic structure, structure, how the diplomatic clauses are organized internally if they are following certain kind of models and how all those models uh, spread or were transmitted uh, across Europe in, in the middle times. Um, so um, basically I'm studying this, um, the Archivo of the, um, de los Condes de Luna, um, the Archive of the Counts of Luna. Um, I'm interested in the late medieval uh, records. And uh, the traditional theory says that um, these seigneurial models were following the models used by the Royal Chancery, and at the same time, the Royal Chancery was following the models of the Papal Chancery. Uh, of course, we have to prove this documentary, and in order to do so, we have to explore a huge corpora of, uh, of documents. So wouldn't it be wonderful to have machines to help us out to do that? Uh, and basic, basically, that's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna talk about diplomatic uh, edition, but diplomatic from diplomatics, not from. I'm, I'm aware that uh, philologists are the front runners, so in, in digital humanities, and that, that historians are kind of falling behind. So I have to clarify this. I'm not talking about representing visual aspects. I'm talking. I'm rather talking about this. Um, is the way we diplomatists um, represent uh, legal charters. So we have our own uh, editorial conventions. We also have uh, a unified vocabulary. Um, so with a unified vocabulary, with uh, unified editorial conventions, and dealing with highly internally structured documents, already in 2003, Mikel Lanzani said that uh, diplomatics was in a good situation to face the transition to the digital paradigm. And of course, there are, uh, there are many uh, diplomatics digital editions. Uh, but the situation is quite inconsistent, I guess, um, quite irregular, I would say. Um, so far, the only solid attempt to create a standard uh, was the, the Charters Encoding Initiative, but it never culminated that, that goal. And there are, yeah, many um, editions, but there are not standards. Um, sometimes you cannot access uh, to the TI file. Uh, sometimes the, the encoding is not that deep or is not uh, intended to answer uh, the necessities, the research necessities of, of diplomatists. So with that situation, um, what I'm trying to do is to raise this question and try to create sort of a standard for the encoding of uh, diplomatic charters. Of course, it has to be in TI. Um, and DI already has very useful model for that, but it has its, its limits, and there's no uh, any particular um, element uh, for encoding the diplomatic discourse. And there are some concepts that are um, particular of my discipline, like the document documentary tradition or uh, the means of authentication that TI is not ready to deal with. So what I'm doing, the TI way to do that, it's quite simple. Uh, you basically use the sec element, and then what I'm doing is just put the link to that uh, online vocabulary that I just showed. 
So there's some place where there's a definition of the concept that I'm trying to encode, and everyone can check this out. But the problem is that the encoding is too verbose. It's not efficient. Uh, you have to type a lot or copy and paste. And actually, when when you have a look at uh, and the, at the encoding, you have no idea what's going on, because here I know that uh, the the entry 182 it's protocol, but in, in the vocabulary in the vocabulaire we have like more than 600 entries, so it's it's not helpful at all. Uh, so basically, using TI Roma, you can configure your own ODD, and again. Uh, thanks to the vocabulaire, I can use um, an already uh, known um, corpus of, of concepts and definitions. And basically, I'm creating my, my own um, ODD, and which is very easy uh, to encode. You, you encode very fast once you know the, the, the charters. The problem is that I've been testing this model just with my uh, corpus of documents, which is very small. But um, so far, um, I'm included in a, a project um, run by some uh, Portuguese and, and Spanish uh, professors, and that will give me a, a, a larger um, bench, um, testing bench to, to prove the model, and also I'm working with the people from uh, monasterium.net. Uh, another problem is that by force, is my model is restrained by the uh, vocabulaire international, so I cannot include any concept that is not there. And also that there are some elements that are already existing in TI, such as text. But in our discipline, text means a different thing. So how can I um, combine or how, ca how can I merge uh, these things? Um, and then finally, I'm going to show you um, uh, the digital edition that I've been working on because for me, the technical aspect is not as important as the social aspect, like trying to foster a small community so we can pull this thing out. Um, how much time do I have? Uh, you've got uh, five minutes. Okay. You've got all left all together. Okay. So yeah, this is the edition, and the first thing that um, it's a very uh, rough prototype, of course. Uh, but basically, you have the list of the documents. You have access to the to the TI file, and with the most important thing is is not only the encoding, but also having a search engine that will retrieve all these clauses. So you you go to search, and let's say that I'm gonna I wanna have a look at the notary, the, the scribe. Um, which uh, wrote the document, and the search engine retrieves the information, but uh, it distributes the information by the clause where uh, the word is included. So, um, for example, here is in the intitulatio, in the intitulation, and I can click on it, and I have the document, um, and also. Uh, you can actually highlight the clause. Uh, you have the link uh, to the definition of, uh, of the clause. And that's basically where, where I'm doing. Uh, thank you very much. Great, thank you. So, questions? So, I'm, I'm wondering. Obviously, one of the issues always with the social um, questions around schemas and standardization is is the, is the general assumption that you need to get everybody to agree on everything ahead of time. And of course, that that, that tends to put real limitations on on how quickly your community can grow, perhaps how much you can grow um, at all. Um, have you considered? complementing some of the stuff that you're doing with things like um, semantic annotation where you can add references to things which you know, obviously you can't 
completely standardized, but but at least give you links out into um, something that's formally defined elsewhere. Yeah, um, actually, um, as I told you, I'm based in Lyon, but uh, I develop all that in the Austrian Center for Digital Humanities with uh, Georg Bugala, uh, who was the responsible for the Charters Encoding Initiative, and he loves RDF and all this semantic web stuff. Um, but again, it, the, my problem is, as I said, is the social aspect. Um, the diplomatic community is very old fashioned. So I'm trying to develop a model that must be as simple as possible, just to create some solid base, some solid ground. And from that, once I get that small community, and if there's actually a social response, it would be wonderful to develop on that. But at the moment, it's a very basic uh, proposal, just to attract people. That's my main concern. and I. What I have to prove is that with this model, I can encode in a very easy and fast way. And I think if I can prove that, people is going to really feel attracted by that. From that, of course, I'm open to, to everything, and RDF and all that would be wonderful, of course. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? Otherwise, yeah, let's say thank you. Thank you.